Alrighty, welcome to this video, and today we're going to talk about the Rust programming language, which is a really interesting language that potentially could replace C and C++, but probably won't because they're just right into our infrastructure in the world, and they are really commonly used languages. So they, it, Rust will probably not replace those languages, but it's a really good language to learn if you want to understand functional programming language, uh, functional programming languages more, or generally the concept of that, but you might also want to, well, write really safe code, which it is for. It's really type safe, but it's also really fast. So Java is a language that does kind of both, but not really that well, and Rust does it better than both. It's not as fast as C or C++, particularly C, but it's type, type safer than those, and nearly as fast, but generally type safer and faster than Java. So that's much, much better. It's hard to learn though. So I'm currently still learning it. I like, you will never be done with anything in programming generally, but I can't do much still as I'm actually someone who does more front end and I'm will I'm willing to learn back end. So I'm just showing you this because I just learned it and I really thought it's really interesting to know. It's one of the basics I know but it's really interesting. We're talking about match. So let's get right ahead into our terminal and with cargo, which basically serves as our tool to manage our dependencies and such things, we can say new and let's call it tutorial and minus minus bin, which, is an ex which creates us an executable, which I just created in a folder that doesn't exist. Sorry about that. It's deleted. And, uh, yeah, I'm really unorganized, you can see. There you are, that should be created right then. It's not, that's weird, right, there it is. Okay, and now let's chat right into it. And you see here, we have a cargo.toml in our source folder. And if we go into source, we see our main.rs. rs is our file extension for Rust, and main generally our main executable or, well, file of Rust. Let's drag and drop this project right into Atom, which I use as my IDE, or I don't know if you can call this one, but it probably is. And yeah, here you see a basic application, or a sim not application, but a basic program in Rust. You have a function declared by fn, and then main with no param, like, well, they, you could potentially put some in there, but it's the main function, so you won't. And then the messages are like curly braces. And finally, it's a function. But you have a ex exclamation mark right there. So that is not a, that's not a function really. It's a macro. Um, and those kind of serve as the programming languages own functions, but there's more to it, but that's not what we're covering right here. So let's get rid of that. And now we're going to create something that they call an immutable variable, which might confuse you a little because it's, it has the same keyword as constants. And well, it says immutable, so it makes sense. Immutable constant, basically it, immutable variable is basically a constant. So we, we just say let, so that's generally how to define your things here. You can't do a variable really, there is a way, but you always use this term first. And how to make this a variable is really easy. You just have to say mute or M-U-T or mute. I don't know how to say that. I, I'll just say mutable. But we're, we're not in any need of that right there. So I'm going to show you a example for the match problem or the match functionality. I don't know how to call this. But I, show, I will just show you something that kind of gives you an idea what it is actually able to do, even though this well, well, this problem is not really going to be what you will be using that on. So let's say names, and here you have something like like a race here. You can actually do that, but they're not as powerful and not useful for this as vectors. You see again an exclamation mark here, and let's just type in some names like Holly. Lucas and my mom's name, Alexandra, Alexandra, I always spell it wrong. And then we could do something like indices. 
I hope I spelled this right, to be honest. I, I know you can write it like this. But in the C's. I hope I spelled this right. I'm sorry if I didn't. And here we could say one o oh, one two in R to two axis all our values right in our vector, but we can also go beyond that. Let's do that by three values, so double of what we actually have. And now what we could do is there are there are for loops in there like name and names for example, and you could print them out. So that would be useful, and that's probably what you would do in here. So that's why I say this is not really a good example, but so if you say for index and indices, that looks really wrong to me though. I have to look that up later. For index and indices, and now you say something like print line. Again, you see that macro there, right there. And now we say index, I'm sorry, index. So now we say here names index. That's what we're gonna say right there. And now we'll print out the current name at position index. Here's where it's going to be printed at. Name for index you could say, and then you can go like right here and say index. So and if we run that, let's go back, cargo run, you see a name for, name, name Holly for O, name Lucas for one, name Alexander for two, and then what we expected we panicked, it crashed, it doesn't work. Well, great. What can we do here? Well, match, obviously. That's what I said. So now what now what you can do is say match. And now you can say names dot get. And you say index. And you're already right into it. So you are currently matching the name at this position. And now you can say some x. So you say here if it has some value that works with x, you can give out or you can do something. Let's say print. That's what we want to do right there. And name hmm, add index. And we could do x. That's our current value, that's the name at index that. Um, at our index, that's x now. And an index would be our index. Come out right there, you could do more than just some x, and you can, you can now do none. And say print line, and you could say right there, error add index, and you're good. I don't know why I put a semicolon right there. Go away. Okay, there you are. We are good. It should work. At this point, you could have probably coded a function here to print something out instead, but that's not what we're doing right here. So let's run. Cargo run. And you see, that works really well. We have our name, 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 and then error at, error at, error at. Nothing crashes. We're out of this. And now we could say, like, we're all done. Execution succeeded. And semicolon. And here you see, we're good. Perfect. All right, so I hope this kind of gave you an idea of what Rust is actually able to do. Maybe it gives you an amount of a motivation to learn this or a new idea for your own language or something like that and let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of rust or if you want to see more of swift again or if you want to see more of dart whatever you would like i will do and it's late for me this time by the way is not my time just in case you would like to know my time is always nine hours ahead of that and yeah, I'll see you then in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.